everyone. Today I have a relatively short video for you and it is a video all about gesso. So if you've never seen what gesso is or um, have never used it, gesso is a paint-like substance. So it has um, the consistency of paint and artists use it to coat and seal canvases, wood, whatever they're going to be painting on with acrylic paint. You can find it pretty much everywhere. Uh, I bought mine at Amazon. And when you add gesso, it makes the surface non-porous. So the paint will not absorb into the surface unevenly. So um, you get uneven opacity or color saturation. And then it also makes it nice and smooth. So you can get a nice, smooth, crisp finish and um, put any type of um, details in there that you want without worrying about um, the surface and what's on it. So gesso is relatively inexpensive. Um, this is the container that I have. It's by Art Basics and um, I bought it on Amazon. It was $10 for an eight and a half ounce jar, which is kind of expensive. But the reason I bought this one is because when I was exploring gesso, the videos that I looked at all showed this exact brand being used. So I thought, I'll go ahead and buy that because I know it works. <laughs> and then uh, when I use it up and I go to buy more, I can either make the decision to buy this again or buy something else. Um, now on Amazon, you can get larger containers for the same amount of money. You can buy a 16 ounce bottle for $10 or even less. So um, you can definitely find a gesso that meets your budget. Now gesso comes in clear, in white, in all different colors. It can also be tinted, but you want to buy the clear for your coloring books because if you don't, then you will cover up most or all of the lines of the image and then you won't really be able to color it. So you want to get clear gesso. So there's a couple ways that gesso can be used. So I'm going to show you that right now. So the first way is to prep your surface for alcohol markers. So on this page, and this is from Alan Roberts' Beauty of Horror 5, um, I wanted to use my alcohol markers because I hadn't used them. I bought them about eight years ago and I just kind of put them away and forgot about them. So I decided that I wanted to start using the supplies that I had that I wasn't using. Um, gelatos are another example. I bought those about the same time as I bought the alcohol markers and never opened them. So um, <clears throat> I knew that the markers would bleed through, so that's how I started exploring about gesso. So what I did was I coated the entire page in the gesso. I used a foam brush. You want to use a foam brush because a bristle brush will leave bristle marks. And if you want a nice even application, then you want to use a foam brush. Now, in some applications, you could um, use a bristle brush, like if you were doing water and you might want to get some um, definition in there. So that might look pretty cool to use a bristle brush if you're coating a water section in gesso, but I think generally you want to use a foam brush and get a nice flat um, surface. You let the gesso dry for about 15 to 20 minutes and then you can color over it in your markers. And I covered the entire page in alcohol markers. So as you can see on the other side, um, there is no bleed through other than 
um, this little section here and this little section here. And there's bleed through because when I coated the page, I didn't check to make sure that I had every little millimeter <laughs> coated with gesso. So that is one thing that, um, one tip that I can give you is that after you coat your page, tip it up like you do when you're trying to see the glitter um, of a glitter pen or a gel pen that you used. Um, do the same thing and that will allow you to see if there are any uncoated parts of your page. So I kind of learned that um, the hard way, although these are really easy areas to be able to cover. I won't have any trouble. Um, all of this is going to be pretty dark, so I should be able to cover, cover that pretty easily. But um, it may not be that way on every page. So you want to make sure that you, um, that you coat your page evenly and completely with the gesso. Um, I found that the markers went on really, really easily. They were very um, smooth. They went on like paint. There was no streaking at all. And then after I let that dry and I went back with my colored pencils, I found that the colored pencils went on really, really nicely and I was able to blend them better and they seemed even creamier than they do normally. I was using Prismacolor pencils. So I felt like um, the gesso made my materials um, work even better on the page than they would normally. Now the only thing that um, you will get with the gesso, and I can show you close up on this, is you do get a little bit of um, texture. Um, for me, that doesn't bother me. I think it's actually um, cool and enhances the look of the page. But if you don't want that, um, I think a second coat would help a lot to help eliminate that. Um, or um, you could um, do a do double coats. So in other words, do a double coat of gesso and then a double coat of your markers and that may help to alleviate it a little bit. But for me, I don't I don't mind that that's there, especially um, since most things in the real world have some kind of texture and are not, totally flat. Even our skin has texture in it. So um, I didn't mind that at all. And then another way that you can use gesso is to help prep a page that um, is printed on paper that is not of high quality. So many books are printed on Amazon Create Space paper, for example. And that paper is pretty thin. Um, and if you were to use wet media, even water-based markers or watercolor paints, they would bleed through. So the gesso really helps to um, allow you to use all of your wet media on that type of paper. And it also helps to strengthen the paper, make it a little bit thicker, and to allow your, um, again, your media to go on it better. Um, paper makes a huge difference. And you may know this when you're coloring in a book and you notice that a certain type of pencil that you have don't color on it really well, um, doesn't color on it really well. So for example, I have some Anastasia Ellie Calder Reva books and I have some Brut Funer colored pencils and they do not color all that well on that paper. The paper is thick, but it has very, very little tooth. It's almost perfectly smooth. So I use my Prismacolor pencils on that paper because they go on there much better. But I can use my Brut Funers on paper that, for example, is in the Beauty of Horror books because it's a little more toothy and the um, oil-based pencils work better on paper that has a little bit of tooth. 
So the paper really matters, but you can alleviate that a little bit by using gesso. So I'm gonna show you an example. I have Grazia Salvo's Loveliness here. Beautiful, beautiful book. I absolutely love it. This is the paperback version. She does have a hardback or a hardcover um, version that is um, more expensive but is printed on better paper but I bought the paperback version so this is a page that I have started when I color portrait coloring books I color the skin on all the pages first I don't like coloring skin so I like to get it over with and that way I can have all my skin tones out at one time and get that all done and then I can put those away and pull out my other colors. So this page is not done by any means and I'm not finished with adding the color, but as you can see, the surface is pretty scratchy. I use Crayola um, Colors of the World on this and they don't go down really great on this paper. Um, Crayola pencils just generally are pretty hard. They have a lot of wax, they have more wax than pigment, and it's really hard to get lots of layers. It's hard to blend them. So um, this appears really scratchy. Again, I have to do a lot more work on this, but um, this is an untreated page, just regular. So, I wanna show you the difference. So this is a page that I coated in gesso first. And I used Crayola Colored Colors of the World pencils. Um, I'm still not finished, I'm still working on it. And though I use different colors, you can still see how it looks so much smoother and you don't see as many lines and um, there's blending and it looks much smoother. And I did the same exact thing on this page as on the other, just coloring and using my colorless blender to blend. And you can see how much better it looks with the gesso laid down first. Now the gesso will buckle your page a little bit. So as you can see, sorry, I'm trying to get the, camera back up. Um, as you can see, the page is a little bit buckled, but when you close the book and leave it closed for a while, sometimes I'll even put some other books on top and just leave it like that for a couple days. When you open it back up, let's see if I can find that page again. When you open it back up, the page will be pretty smooth. It may not be perfect like it was when you bought it, but it will be pretty smooth. And for me, I think it's worth it to get a nicer lay down um, and better blendability um, with the gesso than I get without it. So it really helps your um, <clears throat> lower cost materials um, like colored pencils um, by Crayola to work better on any type of paper. So that's it. Um, those are my two ways that you can use gesso. So I hope that this video was beneficial to you and that you learned something. I would love to see in the comments um, your trials and tribulations with using gesso in your coloring books. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, that helps me to produce more content and let you know when new content um, that I have made is up on my channel. So I hope you have a great day. Happy coloring and take care.